Astrobot is the game you buy a PS5 for. Astrobot is the triumphant exclusive the PS5 desperately needed. Astrobot. Has PlayStation finally found its mascot character? PlayStation's Astrobot beats Mario at his own game. Across the board, reviews for PlayStation 5 exclusive Astrobot echo two key ideas. One, that Astrobot is an absolutely incredible game, arguably one of, if not the best thus far of 2024. And two, that the game shows a path out of the woods for Sony, a company that otherwise ought to feel very embarrassed about their other recent gaming offerings. Forbes senior contributor Paul Tassie has summed up the general mood from most professional reviewers by saying, While everyone was hoping that Sony's Astrobot would be good, I'm not sure anyone was predicting what's happened here. And we're now seeing an enormous win for PlayStation in a week where it badly needs one. Astrobot director Nicolas Doucet has been outspoken in discussing how Team Asobi's latest title is a deliberate rejection of the idea that a game should keep players hooked endlessly. He said, You can eat a lot of food at a buffet, or you could just go for that two-course meal that's really going to be small and just the right amount. But this one is going to be memorable. Doucet has reiterated this approach to scope in various other interviews, insisting that Team Asobi's approach was to keep the length of the game manageable to avoid needless repetition, and instead focus on providing a high level of quality. Speaking to CG Magazine, he said, The size of the game was important, but we wanted to avoid unnecessary downtime. Instead of making a 20 to 30 hour game with some downtime, we aimed for 12 to 15 hours with a great tempo. So then, the short answer is that Astrobot is brilliant precisely because the developers behind the game kept things small and focused. For the long answer, let's look at what actually happened when developing the game. This is why Astrobot matters. The decision to create Astro's Playroom didn't come from higher-ups within Sony. Instead, the team behind the game requested permission to develop what they saw as a short, sweet showcase of all of the PlayStation 5's unique features. The game, a cute mascot platformer, was pitched as an opportunity not just to familiarise new PS5 owners with the harpic feedback offered by the console's controller, but also pay tribute to 25 years of PlayStation history. There was a reason why Team Asobi is so well placed to make a showcase for PlayStation hardware. Based in Sony Interactive Entertainment's Tokyo building, the developers have a much higher level of access to Sony's R&D department than most other studios within the PlayStation umbrella. According to PS5 product director Toshimasu Aoki, Team Asobi is the first game studio to get controller prototypes, because we're literally across the street. Asobi's mission to create magical experiences for everyone was also what we wanted to target with the PlayStation 5 console as a whole, so that was the number one reason we had a lot of work with them. This being the case, there was another reason internally why Team Asobi wanted to take on the challenge of creating Astro's Playroom. Having previously developed Astrobot Rescue Mission for PSVR, they saw the PS5 showcase as a chance to prove that they were ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the biggest names in mascot platformers. According to Doucet, That was the opportunity to prove to ourselves that we could make a platformer game outside of VR in a very competitive space. Even though platformers are not a very common type of game, the ones that do exist are very high quality, from people who've been making them for years and years. So we had to prove to ourselves that we could do this for PlayStation. As much as the team might have felt that they needed to prove themselves, they already had begun developing significant clout within the platforming community. Astrobot Rescue Mission had earned critical acclaim for its highly polished approach to platforming in VR. Looking at the design philosophy behind Rescue Mission, it's clear that Team Asobi were already well on their way to becoming industry leaders in platformer gameplay. One level, one adventure. In a 2019 GDC talk detailing the team's philosophy towards game design, Doucet had explained that Astrobot Rescue Mission had been built around this simple mantra. We ensured that each level introduced a unique theme to be remembered by, he explained. These were often inspired by pop culture. For example, there's a level inside a whale, and that's Pinocchio. 
there's a level inside a cave with traps, and that's Indiana Jones. While assets were reused between levels where necessary, they were tweaked, either through colour or lighting, to try and make them feel distinct and unique. According to Doucet, there is an expense to that, of course, making everything unique, but in the end we thought that it was better to have 8 hours of fresh gameplay rather than 15 hours of recycling. With Astrobot's existing focus on drawing from pop culture, it was a natural extension of what the team had already created to have Astro's Playroom highlight various pieces of PlayStation hardware from throughout the brand's history. Even more clearly though, it's possible to see how this approach led to the new Astrobot's variety of cameos and references to PlayStation games old and new. Indeed, these cameos fit so well with the kind of one-level, one-adventure gameplay that Team Asobi had already been creating, that it almost felt like this had been the plan all along. I thought we'd ask for 150 cameos and we'd get 50. This time around, rather than drawing from wider popular culture, Team Asobi were focusing on PlayStation history, and that meant asking for more than a few favours. To the team's surprise, they were granted permission to use almost every character on their list. Said Doucet, We spoke directly to Corey Barlog and Eric Williams, and in their eyes, it's great that we're able to do something different with Kratos. God of War is such a dramatic IP, and you have to be very careful about the world, so the moment you start bending those rules, it's quite refreshing for them. It helped that Team Asobi were clearly coming at these cameos and references with a sense of respect and love. Said Doucet, It is a bit of a geek dream. They're not just characters, they have meaning and are very close to our hearts. When you grow up with a game, it's not just a game, it was a part of your life, which means there is an emotional attachment. So hopefully everyone will find their favourite ones. Thus, Team Asobi were in a position to draw on their existing strength of reinterpreting popular culture and applying it to tightly focused levels that weren't filled with unnecessary bloat. The relatively small scope of the game made providing an extra level of polish and justifying the use of these cameos all the more achievable. According to Jason Schreier, Nicolas Doucet, the director of Astrobot, told me that during development, his team got together every two weeks and played the game, which seems sort of obvious, but you'd be surprised how often the people working on a game don't or can't actually play it until the very end. Said Doucet of these meetings, Usually it's quite obvious when something is going well. You can gauge it from the reaction of the team. I watch people a lot, because when you're talking about humour, sometimes we have different sensitivities to something that might be funny. And if you see people finding something funny, I tend to put my own feelings aside. It's just one person's view. If the whole group is having a moment where they feel something is really great, that's a good gauge. The decision to keep things tight and focused meant that the team were able to be ruthless, removing anything that felt like it dragged, or didn't quite work in the context of the levelling question. According to Doucet, We've thrown a lot at the wall. We had a few bits that didn't make the cut because they were too bare bones. When you look at those post-its, there is a lot of stuff that we've not even taken to prototyping that's probably great. As for wider influences from the platforming genre, while the team behind the game don't love talking about the inspiration that's been taken from other similar games, many reviewers have pointed out how much Astrobot feels like a Mario game. According to art director, Seb Bruckner, Mario games are a form of pop culture. It would be very dishonest to say, oh, we're not influenced by pop culture. If there's any sheepishness among the team in admitting that they've drawn inspiration from Mario, the number of reviews that describe Astrobot as beating Nintendo at their own game must be very welcome feedback. We all play games and have stacks of unfinished ones, so the size of the game was important, but it wasn't an obsession. We didn't insist on a 20-hour game. In fact, we cut quite a lot because some levels felt repetitive. If a power-up was used twice on two planets, using it again on a third planet didn't bring anything new. Players would be happy to discover it the first time and enjoy the variety the second time, but by the third time they would expect more. 
So we decided to consolidate and bring back the ideas in a better way. We did this quite often, keeping Astrobot reasonably sized while maintaining a good tempo. Doucet's stance, that the quality of an experience rather than the quantity, shows exactly why the wider gaming community has latched on to Astrobot as the antithesis of all the perceived problems within the games industry. With an increasing number of high-profile, big-budget failures, it's become clear that many recent gaming trends are losing their shine. Consumers can only split their time between so many similar live service games, hero shooters, and open-world titles before reaching saturation point. To many gamers, Astrobot feels like an anachronism, a throwback to a simpler time when games were small, contained, and carefully crafted. To others, this retro vibe is simply proof that good gameplay never goes out of style, that games should do more than simply absorb as much of the player's time as possible. Beyond this, though, Astrobot shows how a group of creatives have developed a signature, very well-polished style over multiple projects. How the vision for Astrobot Rescue Mission has been refined and developed to the point that a relatively new team rivals the masters of mascot platforming, all through making smart choices about how to communicate their artistic vision. The moral of the story, then, is not just that shorter, polished games are more fun than bloated time sinks. It's also that there's something to be gained from finding the approach to life that works for you personally and then working to improve your talents and abilities to become the best version of yourself.